7064. What is that? 57064 Wix oil filter. Is that filter number? For the engine oil filter. You yes. sure? Yes. You sure that's the I'm one? Positive. Are you certain? Certain. Be positively certain? Positively certain, yes, sir. Awesome. Hello there, viewers. Good day to you guys, and welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here. I knew. I'm super glad to be here. This is a uh, 2012, I believe it is, Chevrolet Malibu. Uh, my paperwork says it's got the big engine at the uh, 2.4 liter four cylinder. Uh, customer states, uh, check engine light was on and it hesitates uh, while trying to drive from a stop. So I have brought out the scanning device. We're gonna hop on in here, fire up this, uh, the engine and we're gonna check it for trouble codes and then kind of go from there. So stay tuned, cause this is gonna be a very good video. Man, you know, this is kind of weird, sort of getting back into the swing of things after my, uh, my sabbatical. I I've really missed you guys. Beginning engine starting sequence now. Okay, started right up, no hesitation. Whoa, I saw some uh, some mileage on the odometer over there. Hang on here, let's get the door shut. Change oil soon, warning, illuminator. Service airbag, warning, illuminator. Got a tire pressure monitoring system illuminator. There it is, TPMS. Do we have a uh, check engine? I don't think we do. What's our mileage on this unit? Looking like. Well, there it goes, 194,454 miles on the odometer. Yeah, she's got some time on the clock. Now, according to the DIC, that's the digital instrument cluster, we have 0% oil life. Left front tires at 35 PSI, right front's at 41 PSI, left rear's at 30 PSI, and the right rear is at dash dash PSI. That's probably not within specified spe specifications. Okay, let's fire up some climate control. It's getting a little warm in here. Scan tools powering up. Satellites are linking up in outer space. We're establishing communication protocol. I want to hop into engine and we're going to see if we have any trouble codes stored in the ECM. It's going to help us out with figuring out why the customer states that the uh, vehicle hesitates while driving. Okay, no trouble codes found in the ECM. Let's just check TCM real quick. Perhaps our hesitation is due to a shifting issue. And if not, we're gonna do a complete code scan while I go out on a test drive. Yep, nothing there, no codes present. So we're gonna do a complete code scan on all the modules in this vehicle. We're gonna go out and test drive it. And then uh, we will determine a path to move forward with. Uh, after we can gather some more preliminary data. Mm, code scan, there we go. Pre-scan everything, scan all modules. You hang out over there for a while. Let's go ahead and get this thing out on the road. Take for a ride. Backing out the auto. Hmm, so far so good. It seems to be running very well, especially for its mileage. Alright, up and over the bridge. Let's give it some full throttles, full steam, maximum horsepowers. Yeah, nice and smooth. Good power band. Okay, coming off throttle on diesel. Yeah, engine runs very well. There's a couple uh a couple little warnings that popped up on the scan tool. Let's revisit those in a moment back at the shop. Alrighty, so I have yet to witness any drivability concerns uh, thus far. Uh, let us go ahead and nudge this thing into the service stall and we can perform a visual and a bit of a more in-depth uh, inspection. Did I have a rapid flashing turn signal flash there? That one's flashing that fast. Okay, rapid flash. That's gonna indicate that we have some kind of a marker lamp that is inoperative. Let's go ahead and nose this thing on inside and take a gander. I guess we'll do a light safety check first. Horn works. 
Always gotta check your horns. Looking good in the neighborhood. We'll nose her in right here. Okay, back to that signal again. That's right signal. Let's fire up the headlights just to make sure they don't come on or off with headlight actu actuation. Uh-oh, right front window does not go down. Right rear is good, left rear is good. Here, let's check the... Okay, so the window does go up and down with that switch, but it does not go up and down with the driver switch. Oh, now she goes there. Now we're working. I think we have a a worn out uh, driver's window switch. I gotta really kind of pull on it super hard to get it to actuate. Okay. Good, 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 good. Let's go check the lights. Well, hello, shop dog. Hello, baby. What you doing? What you doing? Oh goodness, did you want some lovings? Come here, baby. Good girl. Hey, you can't come in though. You, you shed. You got stinkies. You're a stinky shop dog. Go on, go lay down. Go on, get, 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 get. Go on. Go on, baby, go. Go, 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 go. Good girl. Okay, marker lamps. Marker lamps, marker lamps. We've got nothing running here. Uh, not there. That one. We're rapid flashing here. Which one's not working? Tell you what, let's go left side. We know that one does work, so we've got signal back here. And then up on the front, signal here. That may be the one that's in op on the right side. Let's check it. And survey says that one is not running. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and pull that one out and take a peek at it. Oh, hood latch. We can't see it. It's down there. I can feel it. There we go. Oh no, Logie, the hood shut is strut is blowed out. That's not good. Yep. Needs a prop rod now. There we go. Extendo rod to the rescue. Stick that guy right in there. Release it some. Let her come down. There we go. That's nasty right there. That's what that's about. Anyway, headlamp cannot reach. There's a vehicle in the way. Okay. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'll have to pull the whole lamp assembly out to get that to come out. Okay, we'll check that in a little while when I get it up in the air. Real quick, let's go back to visiting that scanner device here. Let's see what we got for uh, trouble codes. Saw some stuff in the airbag module. Yeah, there's a few airbag codes here, several actually. Driver side, driver side, passenger side, driver side. Yeah, that's its like own separate diagnosis. We'll circle back to that later. ABS, right front wheel speed sensor circuit fault erratic. Mm, history, test failed since cleared. Okay, that's something to look into. And as for engine, we had nada. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's just confirm the easy stuff staring at us in the face real quick. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna use the tire pressure monitor detection tool and we're gonna confirm just exactly which one of these TPMS sensors is not transmitting because the vehicle will need a new sensor. So we key it on, uh, let me turn off the blower so we save the battery and we're gonna push the lock and unlock button uh, simultaneously. What that's gonna do is put this uh, TPMS system into learn mode. About 10 seconds of holding. It's gonna make a liar out of me. Yep. It's fixing to make a liar out of me. All right, it's not working. So, uh, next method here to engage TPMS learn mode. Uh, we're service and tire monitor, push and hold enter. We're waiting for some horn chimes. It should beep twice at us. When we get two beeps, that tells me we are in learning mode. 
and it's still not wishing to put me there. Key off, key on. All right, that method did not seem to work, so I'm gonna go into the scan tool, enter TPM learning mode, initializing, yeah, 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 blah, blah, yeah, I got it. Learn mode. Okay, two honks, there we go. Now we're in learn mode. So what I'm gonna do is grab the, uh, we call it the orange tool, because it is or orange in color. And we go around and we're gonna ping each one of these sensors near the, uh, the valve stem. That's where the uh, sensor body is located. So we put this right on the wheel, or the tire rather. Ping the sensor, see a little light. Okay, one honk. That means that this one red and trained for the right front. Next one. Hit the button, green light, two honks. That one is trained for the right front. And this one. No honks. See that one? This one is not transmitting. Okay. So that's one inoperative sensor. Check this one real quick. Okay, that one trained, we had a horn honk. So that tells me that the right rear is the one that is inoperative. Let's power that down. That confirms what our uh, data had already told us, but the right rear is the sensor that has been affected. Let's check on that wheel speed sensor circuit next real quick. Uh, here's what we'll do, take this block of wood, throw that guy down right there. That will stop that wheel from turning. We can put this thing in drive. And then due to the properties of the open differential on this front axle, only the right front wheel is going to want to turn. Okay, in drive, foot off the brake. See left front wheel stationary. Right front is turning. We're gonna let this turn for a second and what we're looking for is the signal to be dropping out to zero randomly and or intermittently. Not moving. All right, coming back in, rechecking our graph. We're relatively stable here, so we have to pretty much base any recommendations off of either history codes or probabilities because at this point I have very little concrete evidence. All right, going back into ABS trouble codes, visiting history code, C0040, right front wheel speed sensor, circuit fault erratic, symptom 0F, Test failed since DTC cleared. History DTC, uh, test not passed since power up. Let's see, and we've got the C0561, system disabled, information stored in invalid serial data, data 71. Uh, we're gonna focus on the 40, the C0040, right front, wheel speed sensor, circuit implausible. Uh, basically what it's saying is that the wheel speed is, uh, well, it, it's saying that it's not plausible. It's saying that when the conditions are, are present, or when normal operating conditions are present, something erratic is being transmitted from the right front wheel speed sensor back to the ABS control module. The ABS control module goes, hey, uh, I know we're all going 60 miles per hour. Why does this one tell me we're going 13 or 46 or 175 or 12 or zero or any other random type of, uh, type of number like that? It's saying that uh, it's not really plausible within its programmed realm of physics for its information coming from that right front to be actually relevant. So it's determining that it's invalid. Uh, most likely the cause is a, uh, a faulty wheel speed sensor pickup um, or the actual sensor itself. I believe both of which are integrated into the wheel bearing assembly uh, on that right front. So uh, if I had to roll the dice and make a recommendation, I would suggest replacing the right front wheel bearing. Okay, let's go ahead and shut this down. So now, we know that uh, 
we've got sort of some direction for the wheel speed sensor. We know that the right rear tire pressure monitoring sensor is inoperative. Let's run this thing back up in the air a little bit farther, take a peek at that wheel speed, and I think I'm gonna pull the right rear wheel off and go ahead and replace uh, that sensing unit. All right, Malibute, all the way up on our green subscribe button. One more click. We'll go ahead and set her down on the locks for some safety. There we go. Now let's take a peek at our sensing elements down here. Let's see, what do we have, what do we have, what do we have? Okay, so there is our wheel speed sensor connector. There's the wire. Right here is our sensing element slash pickup. And again, all that's integrated into this right front uh, hub bearing over here. I don't see any visual defects with the wiring. No, uh, no damage, no rat damage or debris damage, things of that nature. I believe we just have an internal fault with, uh, with that sensor. Brakes look good. A little bit of an oil leak going on here. The side's in similar condition. Almost no rust down here, good. Good looking vehicle. Fantastic shape, good brakes back here. Good subframe, good tires, good muffler, good bumper, good exhaust, good hubcaps, good to go. Hey, Laura. Look, there's a GoPro on my head. How's it look? That looks good. Is it good? Yeah, I'm trying to, what is it? This looks so bad. Does it? I don't know, it looks kind of cluttery. I think it looks, it is cluttery. I got, well, I got a sweet It's hand. always darkest before the dawn. <laughs> Am I in focus? Are you in focus? Yeah, you... you're, you're way up there, hi. <laughs> Hello, okay. Um, yeah, I need. I needed my hands, so. You know what? That's a really good idea. I don't know, cause I think I'm just gonna be like. You know, I should get one of those. Head all over. When I can drive or when I'm cooking, I can uh -huh. use videos and use my hands. Do 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 The thing in the shop that makes the noise. You did this to me. Bye. Yeah. I'm gonna go to work. Yeah, we're gonna try this uh, head noggin cam business out real quick. Not sure how well this is gonna function long term, but we're gonna try it out. I need a socket. Right rear, we're gonna go after this sensor. Oh, Lauren! Come here, darling. On this Malibute, the oil life monitor says zero percent. So when we talk to them about the sensor and the, uh, the bearing, um, see if they would like us to change the oil with some premium, high quality, fully synthesized damn oil products. Okay. In a moment of shameless self-promotion. <laughs> yeah, is that good? Yeah. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go take this wheel apart. Okay. Roll it in, roll it in. I sure hope you guys can see what we're doing here because I've never uh, done such things before with, um, with head cams. Let's see how this works out. Now, when you break tires loose, and you know it has a sensor inside, you put your shovel opposite of the valve stem because the valve stem is where the sensor is in most cases. Not all cases, but most cases. I don't know how to use this machine. Aha. Spin it around, shovel it out. Up on the table. Hit the button. There's the sensor. It's gross.
Ew, no wonder it died. Look, this tire is full of fix-a-flat. Not okay. Fix-a-flat kills sensors. There she is. That's the sensing element that is no longer functioning. I'm gonna go to my Alltel kit. Hello, shop dog. Good baby. I'll see if I have a, a sensor in stock. I believe I do. No. 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 Ah ha ha, there it is. I knew I had this. There's some sensors. I'm gonna change one. They screw on to the uh, the valve stem, like so. so we're gonna pull this guy out of here. There we go. Toss that in there. That's to protect the chrome. Take the pliers, grab the stem, twist it, yank it out. Okay, so what we do, we take a new sensor. Now, don't harp on me too bad for doing this the wrong way. There's actually supposed to be a tool that you thread into this. It's like a stick with threads on the end of it and you use that to pull these units through. Um, I don't have that, so I'm just gonna use uh, some, uh, some side cuts for now. Uh, this can be done if done properly. Uh, I've got an old hand in such things, so I know how to do this without damage. However, the proper tool should be used uh, to the novice. Or the novice should be using the proper tools, not uh, not such things. Uh, I just happen to have just bought this tire set, and I don't have all the stuff that I need. But either way, that's how it's done. You just kind of pull the thing on through. Now we have a new sensor installed on our on our old wheel. So we may now put the tire back on, rebalance it, reprogram it, and that will be the end of the TPMS light uh, for this particular Malibu. Here we've got to get the uh, remainder of all that fix a flat out of this tire. Can't have the liquid fix a flat floating around in there, contaminating our new sensing element. That would not be okay. So we're just gonna kind of wipe it out. Yeah. A little bit of soapy water lubricant. Hello, dear. Hey. You looking? What you looking at? I'm watching you. Here. Putting on the tire. My tire machine. air hose. Push the lever. How? We're going for a 35 PSI. Where are we at? 20? More power. More pressure. Here we go, 35 PSI. Pull that guy off, hang it, take our cap, 
screw it on, release the table. Now we can balance this unit. So pull this guy off, spring stays, and we need to cone it from the back side. So we're looking for, thinking, which cone do we need? This one? These are all greasy. They're brand new and slimy. That one's too big. Next one down. Right there, that cone's just fine. So we'll slide that up and over. Grab the tire. Slide that combo over the shaft. Now it's gonna wanna drop out that center cap. So my hand is on the other side to catch it. Take this unit, slide it on over, onto the cone. Crank it till it's tight. Now you see guys hitting these things with hammers, trying to make them tighter. Uh, don't do that. Do not hit this stuff with a hammer. Hand tight is good. So now we spin it. Make sure it's not running all weeby wobbly sideways. This is good. I should probably turn the machine on. Okay, let's set up diameter. We have, looks like a 16 inch wheel, yeah? Let's check our wheel diameter, 17. So we're rocking out a 17. 17 inch, back spacing is six inches. We'll set you up for six. And this is a, probably a 6.5 inch wide wheel. Let's just measure it real quick. 7.5, okay. 7.5. So width is 7.5. And I wanna set this up for a two plane dynamic balance. for three ounces. Okay, connect me with your senior supervisor for details. I'll, I'll bear with the music. Thanks for connecting. How Hello. are you today? Hello, I am questioning whether or not you're aware it is unlawful to solicit as a business. You're soliciting businesses with your computerized fake AI phone call and I do not appreciate you calling me, disrupting my business practices. Are you aware this is illegal? It's illegal. It's illegal. Ooh. Okay, back to what I was doing. A Little bit of brake clean on there. We gotta wash off the old nasty and Make a gravity, make a nice surface for our sticky weights to stick to. See, there's stick ons that go on the inside plane and then a clip on on the outside plane. So I had to pull the inside plane weights off, wipe them down, we'll re spin it up, and then 250 on stick ons. So there's one ounce, two ounce, we'll go with two ounces at first. So I've got two ounces of stickies. Spin that at the top right here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There we go. Give that a flip. We'll pull off the sticky section. Stick it to the top side of the wheel. I always do the uh, the heaviest weight first. For example, this one's asking for 250 and 50, but we're not going to do the uh, the 50 first. I'm actually going to do the 250 first, but I'm only going to put on two and then we can step it up the rest of the way to the remaining 0.5 ounces. So right there at the top, that's our mark. Make sure it's even, looking good. Spin it up again. So it's asking for 50, 75. We'll go with that uh, 
clip on 75 on the outside next. Okay, we're looking at 75 and 50 now. So we'll do the, again, the larger one that's three quarter ounce on the outside edge. Let's open that up some. It should ask for another half an ounce. Oh, nope, we're all good. All good in the hood. So that wheel is now balanced. Let's go ahead and pull it off the shaft. Cap going back on. Good to go. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep those Malibu K wheels rolling. Okay, give it a flip. Grab my nuts. Thread them up. And now I need to program this to the module in the vehicle. Port limiting stick. Back up off the lock. Knock, release. Come down. We can see you with my helmet cam. You like it? Yeah, I like it. Is it pointed the right way? Can I fix it? Yeah. Is that better? Cool. Okay, back to the scanner tool. Let's go ahead and begin reprogramming these TPMS sensors. Okay, we're gonna have to use the uh, a different tool in order to actually write the program on this. It's also a new tool, not updated, don't care. So we have to select the correct vehicle. That's Chevrolet. Chevy, Malibu, Malibu, and what year is this? Uh, 2012, we said, yeah. So we're gonna go scroll away down here, select, and then we're gonna go program sensor. Auto create one through 16, keep sensors program, sure. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna scan all of them, I guess. Auto create, begin sensor scanning. Mm. Work. Okay, scanning all sensors. We gotta make sure that it's picking up every single sensor picked up right front. Now we know three of them are working, but I wanna get them all scanned into the tool. Moment of truth. This one's not waking up. Uh oh. Rot row. Rot row. What are we doing? Well, let's go over here to this next one. Wake up, you. Mm, frustrating. I had to deflate this and reinflate it a couple times. Let's see if it's gonna it's gonna wake up. Oh. Scan and wake up sensor. 
I know it reads because I read it standalone, but it doesn't seem to want to read while I'm monitoring all others. See, it's, it's not wanting to do it. This is user error on my part. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. You hear me, sensor? Scan. You flipping thing. Ah. Ah, uh, there we go, it's waking up now. One sensor detected, continue. Yes, one sensor programming. Doo -doo -doo. There we go, got an ID. That's good. Now we're getting somewhere. Relearn procedure. Okay, proper tool, blah, blah, blah. Stationary method one. Set the vehicle into park. Yeah, da -da. let's see what else say here. Make sure all the tires are inflated properly. Turn the ignition on, connect the tool to the port, write the sensor IDs, turn the switch off. Drive it. Lock and unlock buttons. Relearn. Okay, got it. Okay, 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 okay. So let's try, let's try this again. Scanning all sensors. We'll cut to the chase. This is the one that wasn't working. There we go. Look at that. Now it picked it up. Beautiful. So let's go rescan the other ones real quick. Like, I had to wake the thing up. It wasn't waking up. Don't tell me you're not going to wake up now. I, I won't have this. This this is the good one. This one works. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, sensor. Hmm. For real? I don't think so. I think the battery may be a little weak on this one, but it was working. Yeah, it's going. What's up, boss? What'd you bring me? Got a filter? Uh, a big old oil filter. I'll take that from you, good sir. Appreciate yeah. you. Take that too. Have a good one. Yep, see you, buddy. WTF. Let's wake up the rest of them. That one went. Next. That one went, yep. And I'm going back to the, this rear one that didn't want to do what it wanted to do. Spin it some, wake it up. Trigger. There, got them all. Good, Butamus. All sensors triggered. You can check sensor status, yes. Checking sensor status. And you can continue, yes. Now I want to program them. Or relearn. There we go. Okay, we're back in. Connected to OBD. OBD2 again, keys on. We're reading IDs, copying IDs, connecting, communicating with the vehicle. It's reading. Okay, I think, I think that completed it. Position relearn. Uh, stationary relearn. Okay, let's go out and hit each one again. And it should be ready to uh to relearn all the positions one more time so hitting it one more time they better pick up yes picking up picking up that was fast this one it better pick up 
faster. Picking up, good. And last one. Pick it up. Pick up. Pick up, pick up down. There we go, okay. Now they're all picked up again. Yes, complete. Collect OBD2 again and turn ignition on, which it is, is currently on. Plugging it in. We are plugged in. Yes, continue. Communicating with the vehicle. Reading IDs, reading DTCs. Okay, it relearned, so now let's retrain positions here. We're back in learn mode. So all of the sensor IDs have been written to the module. All the sensors are awake. Now we just need to teach each sensor, each sensor what position they're in. That one just took. You hear the beep? And last one. Wake up. There we go. Double beep indicates that's the end of learn mode. So key it back off, key it back on. And we're gonna go through the list here. It should tell us we have tire pressures at each corner. Yep, there we go. 29 right rear, 28 left rear. So I've got to adjust them and the fronts were 40 and 35, so I need to set everybody to the correct pressure. But now we have one new sensor that is sensing. It's been replaced, it's programmed, it's been relearned in its position. This operation is a success. Let me relearn the oil life while I'm in here because I'm doing an oil change as we speak. Push and hold reset. It doesn't care. Okay, new tactic, key off key on one two three times with the pedal that may have reset oil life monitor let's find it yep, there we go oil life 100 percent key it off and now i'm waiting on a wheel bearing all righty back outside engine oil and filter has been refilled oil life's reset tpms problem solved Let's go ahead and get some progress made on this uh, right front wheel speed sensor circuit intermittent plausibility fault. Uh, basically, we're gonna put a hub bearing in it. So let's go ahead and pull the wheel off. We're gonna pull the brake off, pull the brake caliper off, pull the rotor off, unbolt the axle, pull the uh, three bolts that hold the wheel bearing assembly in position, disconnect connector, hammer the thing off, and then reverse procedure with a new unit going back in. Okie dokes, back at the right front. Wheel coming off. We're gonna move quickly. That one wasn't loose. It wasn't tight. It was loose because it was not tight. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna move a little bit quickly through this. Fairly straightforward operation. No need to dilly dally around here. So, caliper and brackets coming off. Let's go ahead and get the axle nut off first and we'll disassemble the entire braking system. Okay, 36 millimeters, loud noises. I meant to set that down and I threw it across the shop. That was great. So, let's go ahead and get the uh, caliper unbolted. I'm not gonna take the caliper off the bracket. We're just gonna take the bracket off of the uh, Steering knuckle. Okay, 13 coming in, 15 coming in. And those are the two bolts that secure the caliper to the knuckle right here. So now, you need to pull that off and hang it up here on the strut. Get one little wire hanger here. 
pull that whole unit off. That's pad and rotor, or pad and caliper and bracket. Stick that in there. Pull the rotor off. And that exposes our hub assembly right here. So let's turn this uh, strut. Disconnect. The electrical connector. Come off. There we go. Now there's going to be three 13 millimeter bolts from the back side of the knuckle coming into the uh, the hub assembly. Let's just see if the uh, extension 13 the swivel is going to get in there and get it. Too much flexibility. Maybe just a straight shot. That one came out. Caliper in the way. Uh, that one need an angle. Let's just see here. So there's the bolt. Back side here. Bring that up higher. Turn. Here comes the bolt. Sets two. And the third one, we'll get it from the back side over here. Get that turn again. third fastener right there. Now, this bearing should be ready to come out. Push the axle through. Keep the connector through from the back. Put the backing plate back, and here is our, uh, our old bearing. Oh look, debris. Bunch of rust chunks and stuff falling off of there. That will mess up our signal for certain. And you guys probably can't feel it, but I'm hearing some grinding in this uh, in this bearing right here. It's not very smooth. Yeah. Okay. New one's here, it's in the box. Let's go ahead and exchange it out with the old one. We bought a brand name bearing, it's a Timken. Good unit, not a, uh, not a Chineseium knockoff. No, nope. break clean. Let's go ahead and pull her out, size it up, make sure it all matches. Checking connector, it looks good. Three flanges. Five lug, five lug, good to go. Let's get this bearing installed in position. So we just basically 
reverse procedure here. Backing plate off, over the bearing. Top section at the top of the hub, that way the wire can reach its uh, connector. Push it in past the axle. I have to slide the splines of the axle in through the hole in the front of the bearing here. Get it all lined up. Now, we'll grab some of the fasteners, feed them in from the back side, and we'll get them started. right there starting to thread in you can see the blue on the threads okay, that one's in next one down towards the bottom through the backing plate and then we can just manipulate the bearing until the threads catch so that's two and I'm reaching around left-handed to get the, uh, the third one back there. And we're not gonna tighten any of these until all three are started and threaded up. There we go. Let's get the electrical connector in place next. Plug it in, clip it on, there we go. And I'll reach around with the 90 and start to uh, thread down the bolts here. one more on the back here. Thirteen. So what I'll do here is apply some torque uh, manually. Since we know that that 90 degree was not enough, Third one. Oh, I went the wrong way. Silly Ray. Good to go. Okay. Bang is secure, plugged in. Straighten it up. Throw the nut on. kind of crusty isn't it out front right there let's clean that up a little bit here a little bit of zizz wheel action just to knock the rust off There 
we go. Nice and shiny. Just like my t-shirts. My, my nice and shiny t-shirts. And of course, we'll uh, get the backside as well right here. Beautiful. Give it a flip, slide it on. That is good. Forward clicks. Torque you in a minute. Just give it a turn. And let's grab the uh, caliper here. Get that off its little bracket. Taking care to not twist the hose. Pads are spread. Slide that on. Two more fasteners, 15 millimeter. From the back. Bottom one. Fifteen coming in times two. Very good. Man, you guys, so the other day I was doing some nice and shiny stuff and I completely forgot the best part about making things nice and shiny. Since I forgot, we'll do it again. There we go. Get rid of all the fingerprints and the nasty. Beautiful. Alrighty, so got the wheels on. They're torqued to spec. Axle nut has been torqued. I went ahead and tossed in a replacement lens, or I'm sorry, light bulb for that right front signal. We've installed the engine oil, replaced the filter, reset the monitor. No more rapid flash on our right hand turn. Same speed in the left hand turn. Not seeing an ABS light, not seeing the tire pressure light. All pressures have been set to 35 PSI. Those are the fronts and right rear is not accurate yet. I guess I did not reset the right rear. Hang on here. Failure. 35.8, 35.4, Okay, 35. Right on the money. Okay, all tires have been reset to their appropriate pressures. That's all good to go. This thing right here. So real quick, I'm gonna go back into my engine data and I'm gonna check for any history codes with regards to uh, that hesitation uh, slash engine, uh, engine behavior the customer had mentioned earlier. Um, there's a possibility that the degradated and low engine oil level uh, was the cause of that. See, this is, a, this is a variable valve timing engine. It happens to have two solenoids on the top side of the cylinder head, one for the intake camshaft and one for the exhaust camshaft. Those solenoids are, uh, they're basically oil pressure valves that run to the actuator sprockets on the camshafts. If oil is low or the viscosity is incorrect, or if it's diluted, covered, or soaked the fuel, um, anything aerated, anything of that nature, it can cause intermittent VVT issues, which will also uh, cause the customer's uh, stated concerns earlier. Now, they had mentioned that these were um, 
uh, it was like an intermittent type of situation. And like what we had seen earlier, there was a 0% oil life in this vehicle and uh, engine oil was, uh, it was black in color and low and degraded. So we now have a, uh, a full engine oil pan with known good quality oil. Uh, I also installed uh, a lizard lotion additive to fortify said oil and prevent it from burning and breaking down as quickly since we have learned that this customer does like to practice extended engine oil drain intervals. So uh, hopefully uh, with the addition of the good oil and an additive package, we will not see any uh, intermittent VVT issues in the future. Uh, that pretty, pretty much only leaves on this car the uh, the airbag issues for me to contend with. But uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to save that one uh, for another day, another video, because we are reaching end of day. And I've covered uh, a plethora of topics on this particular vehicle. So having said all that, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you think about this thing uh, and these knick-knacky little repair items in the uh, comment section down below. Uh, do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, go on over to RainmanRaysRepairs.com and check out our new line of t-shirts and merchandise that we have just recently rolled out, which would also include the nice and shiny t-shirt line, Everything's a Hammer. And there's also a, a very clever uh, a uh, brand uh or a, a branded t-shirt feature that reminds you that you need to kind of know what you're doing that way you don't die that was my particular favorite uh, again head over to raymanraysrepairs.com check those things out let me know what you think uh buy a t-shirt or shoe or two if you're so inclined and that will end my moment of shameless self-promotion so again and as always thank you guys for watching and most importantly have yourselves a fantastic day see you guys later into malibu and in uh, multiple faceted repair slash diag video, in a day, in a video, in a transmission. Powering down. Pew.